look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Let's first of all give a big God bless you to Chuck Beers. And I want to, I want you to talk about where we are now, prophetically. Talk to them about what you were talking to me a few days ago, but then expand a little more on it, please, okay? Well, I think Pastor Tommy really opened up the door for where we are. We're at probably the most incredible crossroad that we could ever be in history. He talked about all the anointings of the past coming together. Let me show you one uh, slide that will help you understand time. Now, while they're getting that slide up there, because understanding time is key, because God's not in time, we're in time. And like Pastor uh, uh, Bishop Reed said, there is a, he predetermines, Acts 17 says, Pastor Benny, he predetermines your times and your place. So see, faith works out of time and place. And so my role in the body of Christ over the years, I would say going back to the 80s, has been to try to help people understand the time we're living in and prophetically decree the time so that we move forward. Now, remember in the Bible, you have the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar was a tribe, one of the 12 tribes, and the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, understood time so they could tell Israel what to do. But they worked with Zebulun. You're always gonna see Judah going first, Issachar, and Zebulun. Judah must go first. So praise. Praise, but Judah was not just praise. They were the warring tribe of leadership, Judah first. Issachar was second because they had to understand time. Now, just hear this, because they knew when Israel needed to shift from Saul to David. Wow. Now, why did they know that? They knew the word of God. They knew what God had said, what he was looking for in a king. Now, the difference between Saul and David was really one thing, the ark of God's presence. And you watch today those that lose the presence of God and do not honor the presence of God. You're in a group here with someone leading you to say the presence of God will be central. You lose the presence of God. That's what creates a Saul church. It's not an old person. It's not someone who's got uh, age on them. It is where Saul could ca have cared less about getting the ark repositioned where God wanted it. Say that again. Saul cared less about getting the ark repositioned where God wanted it for the future. David was determined, even though his first attempt he did wrong. He was determined to get the ark position. Issachar knew the times so they could help all of Israel make its transition toward the next move of God's presence. I am here to announce to you tonight, we're on the verge of a new move of God's presence and he is realigning us, gathering us in a new way so we can make the shift. It doesn't matter if you even made mistakes in your past season, he's ready to get you realigned if you're looking for the presence of God. Now, Bishop, shared something that I want to show you up there. Show that vav where the past and the future come together. Now, I always look from a Hebraic standpoint. And then, let me finish this. Issachar and Judah had to align with Zebulun. Zebulun had two characteristics about Zebulun. They were the tribe that knew how to prosper. 
They were the tribe that knew how to bring increase in when increase needed to come in. And they also were a tribe that knew how to go to battle. And so with those three tribes moving together, they had provision, they had God's timing, and they had the sound that was necessary to bring triumph. Now, I believe you are gathered at this time right now because God is raising up a new remnant of leaders. And he's not looking at age. He's looking who is ready to create the mantle of triumph for the future. And we're hearing the call. We're all hearing the call. Let me tell you one thing. Last week, I was visiting with the Chickasaw governor up in Oklahoma. And on the way back, this was Thursday, I had planned this week with my family. The Lord said, I called my assistant, my vice president who does my scheduling. I said, if Benny Hinn calls, I need to be with him. The Lord just spoke it to me when I was driving back. See, you must know God's timing to get positioned at the future, or what's going to happen at your crossroads, you're going to go down the road, wrong what was, road. What was amazing, I did not know the Lord had spoken to him, had no idea he was going to be on vacation. The Lord said, call Chuck. Friday afternoon. Friday, I called him. And the Lord told him Thursday what he just said. My assistant called me Friday night, Shabbat night. And my family gets together, we have a great time. And he said... You're not going to believe this. Benny Hinn's ministry just called, and Pastor Benny wants to see you on Monday. I said, I told you I was there. Now, I'm using that as an example because you have to hear the call in the realignment that God's doing. If you do not hear the call in this realignment, Pastor Benny, we're not going to come into the alignment that's going to produce our next trial. You told me Monday night, without knowing a thing, that this week is destiny for me. The and, and it's not just this, because I can't talk no. about the other one. But it, it, that was amazing to me. The Lord told me I had to go see him because prophetically he had to understand that decisions that would come into his life this week. And I had this with me right can here. We, can we see it, guys, because there's too much light? I, I, think you, I think you can look up there. And, and Pastor uh, Bishop Tommy, let's look, look up here so you can see it. Now, the number six is called Vav in Hebrew. What that means, Pastor, uh, uh, Bishop Reed, is that uh, this year, in a season that is linked with, in Hebrew, the number 70. It means that this whole season through 2019, we're breaking the past structures of captivity that's trying to hold us. That's what it means. It means God is watching you at the crossroads. I'll show you that symbol in just a second, and you'll see it, and that's all I want to show you. God's watching you at your crossroads. That's exactly what this season is about. Here's the thing about this year. The next two years become the critical conflicting years for all of us to come into a realignment. We're at the middle of a historical moment. We will never be in this time frame again. That's why you can never buy into cessation theology that says everything ceased to happen. We will never be back at this moment in time again. Now, what makes this year so key is what uh, Pastor, Pastor Tommy just said. All of a sudden, what this year means at your crossroads, your past, see, God's not in your, in, God is not in time. And, but you are, so what he do, he's doing this year is bringing your past and all the anointings of the past into a moment 
and the vob means staking your claim on the future and all of a sudden in a moment in your life in time some supernatural event will occur it could be this pastor's gathering may i may i ask you now we are 2016 what year is this on the Hebrew calendar? In the Hebrew calendar, it's 5776. So I want to tell you, if you're a covenant child of God, you need to understand six because even if you're in our calendar, you're in six. The difference between our calendar is it's 16, which is 10 and six. 10 actually means your testimony's developing. But you look at 70, it means things are coming to a completion from your past. And things are wrapping up and a completion is occurring in your bloodline and all of a sudden your testimony of overcoming is developing and when that happens you'll stake your claim on the future and then all of a sudden all these anointings that have been rolled together and God's new order that is developing as we gather those anointings start falling down on us and Pastor Benny with his anointing, he's going to have a whole new anointing on him and a powerful anointing and everything that he has cared from the past now expels and really explodes into the future. You ain't seen anything like your anointing's going to be from this day forward. What do you mean by that? I mean the anointing that you've carried, healing, miracles, evangelism. Right. Pastoral teaching, I've, I, I've followed you, I've, I've looked at your teaching. All of that now, you're going to start gathering in a new way. And all of that anointing now is coming into a new vial of anointing in you. And you're going to pour it out in a new way and there's going to be an explosion with those who align with you. That's what this year is about. You're coming to a new place of alignment in your life. You're knowing you're having to align. You're knowing you're having to receive. You know that those that go, have gone before you have something to release upon you. You know that a vision, without a vision of people perish, that means without prophetic utterance. Without prophetic utterance for the future, you won't have the necessary vision to move forward. Say that again because I've not heard that before. Without a vision, that word in Hebrew means without prophetic revelation that is uttered. Wow. Without prophetic revelation, a people go backwards and are no more. What this year is about is is you connecting in such a way with the Lord and those that God aligns you with so that you go forward into a whole new anointing. And see, God, who's not in time, is capable of rolling. He, it's nothing to him to go back four generations, six generations, ten generations, and all of a sudden, he brings all that redemptiveness that's in your bloodline and he sets it right in front of you and because you're seeking him, you step right in it. He brings all the iniquities that's been in your bloodline and because you're seeking him, doesn't matter what great-great-grandpa did, all of a sudden he sets, you, sets it in front of you, you step in it and reconcile it. This is a divine year of realignment, but the crossroad makes a shift this year and the next two years become very conflicting because God's people are in such a changing time. What do you mean by the next two years being conflicted? This is what God showed me. He caught me up at Liberty Park in uh, New Jersey. I was to be the speaker for a gathering of, we were going to open the gates for the glory in 2008. And we rented the train station. People would come through Ellis Island, and then they would come catch a train. They would go into New York. Our whole nation was formed this way. 
And so we were asking the Lord to open up the glory and bring it forth that had never been seen before in this nation through his people. And the Lord caught me up and fell on me for four hours. I did not speak during that conference. And I was the one that was supposed to be their guest speaker. He caught me up and he began to show me it looked like a glory stream moving in every state. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, that is my triumphant people. Now, I want to say this to you. I was seven years ahead. I knew I was in a different time frame. That's what makes us prophetic. God doesn't hold us in time. We can see into the future. And he showed me this glory stream forming. He said, beginning... In 2015, my people will begin to gather in a new way. We're here at 2016. Look around. Tell someone next to you, we're gathering in a new way. Every state in America. Now, I want to go ahead and say for you from other nations, because I travel the nations. My call is to the nations. He showed me 153 nations that would align with his glory. It went on. I went back. I recorded it. He showed me what every state in America looked like. I've gone on Sid Roth. I've gone on others. I've written in books what, it re, what, it, what they look like. Not every state was in covenant with him, Pastor Benny. There were only 21 states in America in covenant with God. And I think that's where we get confused God has covenant alignment, and it could be some of you sitting here today that he's going to renew his covenant with because he said by this time, which was June this month, by this time we would already be in the new beginning of what he was doing. Look at somebody around you and say the new is already here. I want you to pray with them. Because the Lord has given you insight that they need. And, you know, the scales need to come off right now. It's just extend your hands like this. Just hold them up. I wish I could lay hands on all of you. Now, I want to say this to you. This is a divine moment, what God is doing. What he's doing to gather. And then I said, Lord, what's that called? He said, that's my triumphant reserve that I will call forth in days ahead. I said, Lord, what is that? And he said, that is a people who will know how to overtake the enemy's plan. He actually said this, my people, this was in 2008, will learn to play the Trump card. Now, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about, but you have to say, that guy's stirring up a system. This is a day of stirring up old structures because a new anointing is coming down. Now, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to stir the Spirit of God up in every leader that has walked in this room. Lord, they have heard the call. They have heard the call. They've witnessed the movement that's beginning to occur. Lord, they're saying, I want to get in this new move of glory. And the Lord says, you're going to lead in this new movement of glory. Lord, let me prophesy. The Lord says, Pastor Tommy, you're going to begin to say, this is what the glory looks like. And you're going to lay layer and layer and layer of glory out. Only that you would know until it becomes a weighty mantle that is laying on the people. The Lord says this is a time where what you can't see, now I'm going to rip off your eyes and you're going to start seeing in a new way. Put your hand on your eyes right now. Lord, I loose new vision. I loose the prophetic anointing in everyone in this room. Lord, I say they'll see what you see for their life, the destiny 
I bind the enemy and I say any blinding spirit is coming off. Any religious force from the past that's holding them back. I say right now it's loosing them so they can see how to get in the move for the future. This is a divine planned week. And I say the voice that you have will be heard throughout the world in a new way. Every nation that wants to move in this new glory move is going to hear this voice in a new way. Lord, I loose it right now. I say multiplication, increase. I loose a timing anointing on everyone in this room. I say when they get up and walk out of here, they're going to walk in a new timing anointing. They're going to know they've stepped in to that destiny. They're going to know they're moving right. Lord, I loose the anointing in this room. Come on, people. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now, all of you. Right now, just say, I'm staking my claim on the future. I'm staking my claim on the future. Lord, I loose this tonight. Stand up and receive it. In Jesus' name. Stand up name. and receive it. Come on, people. Amen. Release it, release it, release it. Lord, I loose it right now. I say there's moments coming out of heaven realigning over everybody in this room, everybody that's watching. Lord, I say this is a divine aligned time where we are staking the claim and everything in the past is rolling in and our future is opening up. Give a shout up into heaven. What you've experienced on today's program is just part of the life-changing ministry during Pastor Benny's three-day conference in Fort Worth. The entire conference is available on eight DVDs for a gift of $120 and will be a valuable addition to your spiritual library. You'll want to hear all three of Pastor Benny's messages plus dynamic teachings by Tommy Reed, Don George, Chuck Pierce, Donald Battle, Mike Murdoch, and Sam Hinn. Whether you're in ministry or any other profession. Your life will be enriched and empowered. Call or order your set online today. It's more blessed to give than to receive, is what the Lord said. I'm thinking about Miss Kuhlman while you were talking on the program yesterday, and Amy Semple and McPherson. They had more money than the government during the Great Depression because wow. they were givers. Wow, wow. Miss Kuhlman fed people all over Pittsburgh. She took food and money to Vietnam. She fed poor people by the thousands while the government could not do it. Same thing with Amy. Now, it's more blessed to give. Do you, you know why? Because givers have an anointing on them. A seed is a conversation, Pastor. When I take something God has given me and I return it to him, Peter was feeling down one day and he said, you know, I've given up my fishing. I give away everything. In Mark chapter 10, he said, Jesus, we've given up everything just to follow you. And Jesus came back and said, everything that you have planted has a hundred full return guarantee. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. Lay your seed today. Lay your seed. I'm very fascinated by the $112 seed based on Psalms 112 because it says there's a guarantee there. Many people were watching today oh. and felt the anointing from the conference right in your building. Oh, that was awesome. That same anointing, I pray, would come upon them as you're speaking. Oh, it will. Can I pray? Yes, I want you to. I want you to repeat this prayer aloud with me. Say it aloud. Precious Holy Spirit, everything I have came from you. My eyesight, my hearing, my family, my job. Today, I enter into a covenant based on the 112th chapter of the book of Psalms. I wrap expectation. My Lord around my seed. And for the next 12 months, 
I expect double wisdom, double favor, double honor, double opportunity. I call in the harvest 100 fold because you spoke it. I believe it. And I will always give you the glory and the praise. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I receive the covenant. You've got to say those words. I receive this covenant. There's a number on the screen. Get off the sofa. Get off the recliner. Reach for the phone. Do it now. Do it now. Delayed obedience is rebellion. Just reach for the phone. And you can say to, the, to our assistant, say, as God provides for me. You may want to sow the $112 seed for two or three of your Why children. Why $112? Based on the 112th Psalm, the Bible says in Psalms 112, a man that delights himself in the commandments of God Wealth and riches, riches and wealth will be in his house. house. Really One man out. told me, Pastor, he says, I love the Bible, but this money and prosperity stuff, I just can't accept it. I said, Brother, if you have to doubt a chapter in the Bible, don't doubt the money chapter. Doubt the hail chapter if you just have to doubt one. But don't doubt the blessing chapter. Don't doubt Deuteronomy 28 when he said, I'll bless you going in and coming out. Don't bless, don't, don't defy the Malachi 3 where he said he would open the windows of heaven. Absolutely. And pour. if you're going to believe anything Jesus said, believe the hundredfold covenant. Amen. I'm in a covenant. I'm in a covenant. So that's what they're making right now. Oh, yes. I want, in fact, uh, I feel like very stirred that there's somebody watching me that there are several needs in your life. It may be out of your business. It may be out of your missions account in your church. But your phone call is going to seal something. I, I call this a turning point seed. A turning point seed. $112, that's not even enough to go to Starbucks over. But it's a something to seal a covenant with God. When I begin to plant a $112 seed, the first reaction was not the territorial anointing that came. But the first reaction was I saw solutions. I told Pastor Benny privately, I said, the $112 seed is a solution seed. I promise you, you'll see solutions to every problem in your life. There was not one problem in my life I couldn't solve swiftly and quickly. It, something happened. When I get involved with God, He gets involved with me. When I honor God, He honors me. There's going to be Praise God. Father, I decree and Amen, declare Lord. solutions to our family all over the world right Amen, now. Lord. I declare on this one $12 seed, wow. there will be solutions to marriages. There will be solution to broken dreams. Amen. There will be solutions come to us. Father, wherever we need the harvest, Amen. we call in the harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Get to the phone. Call Glory it in now. Us. Go online. There's an, 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 listen, don't miss this because when the grounds are moist, it's the time to sow. Do yes, it right now. Yes, yes. We'll see you again tomorrow for a great program. But don't stop calling and sowing. The Lord is about to give you a mighty miracle. Get ready. Love Glory you. to God. Glory Somebody to God. say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God.